You're very soft. Oh, now I can hear. There Nobody was saying anything. <laughs> You're just moving your mouth. Nobody was saying anything. <laughs> Hi, it's Mike. How are you guys today? Good, Mike. How are you doing? Pretty good, because Lou set me up in her spare office, and I have a better background, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. I just drove by, because uh, I'd made a wrong turn. Uh, it's, um, Amanda's coming, right? She just isn't on yet. And I drove by Ottawa Park, where we had that picnic dinner hot dogs yes. thing. Um, good news. Someone did put up one of those free book things. Bad news, there's only one little book in it I could see from the road. So I use them all the time these days. And if anybody wants to see how nice the park looks and toss the neighborhood a book or two, um, the one in Wood Valley is up to overflowing. So uh, anyway, it was very, it's very nice to see the park. Of course, there's a lot of, a lot of water in the um, drainage ditch there. Is there a tetherball court there yet? There's still tetherball? You know if they're using it at all? I haven't heard I don't know on either it. point. I, I guess I didn't look for it. I saw the old, the relatively older, Luann, uh, mature play equipment there, but uh, I didn't look for the tetherball. So I'm going to mute myself here. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our meeting today. Um, welcome, Commissioners and Luann. Good to see you. Um, so I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's 12.01. And then next on the agenda is um, the public hearing about the Towner Road Park Playground Grant application. Luann, would you like to provide an update on that? Hey, Luann, there's some, uh, Kelly is in the chat and says that she's here regarding hygiene house, but she didn't right. know if anybody could see her. I sent an email back to her saying, can't yeah, um, see her, but yeah, I don't uh, know if she was let in yet or not. Stephen Gibbs will let her in uh, either now or shortly, because I did send him an email. Oh, okay. she'll be let in as well as her Eagle Scouts will be let in. Okay. Okay, so um, Anyway, uh, we, the Park Commission voted that they're interested in applying for a grant for playground equipment at Towner Road Park. Um, Jane Greenway has been working on that plan and therefore I am going to, if Jane is on, Jane, I'm not seeing you on. Oh, there she is. Um, Jane, would you like to start the conversation? Oh, there you are. It wasn't showing me before. Now we're here. Okay, welcome. So anyway, Jane, why don't you give us a little update on where we're at with the grant application and what the project entails? Sure. Um, thank you. We have um, developed Towner Road Park uh, two years ago, I believe. We had the grand opening and um, Towner Road Park is amazing, over 20 acres and serves our northern um, part of the township with two huge ball diamonds, a beautiful paved walking path, a pavilion, and very popular pickleball courts. Who who would have thought that the pickleball courts would be popular year round in Michigan? But the pickleballers are shoveling snow off there and really enjoying them. But what this um, 
park is missing is a play area. And so we started looking at our options and we came up with the idea of doing something that is play, but also healthy and builds muscles. So we're proposing to install an intergenerational play space, play and exercise space. So this would be something similar to the outdoor fitness equipment that we have at Wanch Park, but different, different company. So a little bit more of the ninja course kind of stuff. So there are some options kind of like the old parkour um, that could be used by all age groups. So we're thinking people that are warming up before pickleball or all of the um, athletes that are out there for the baseball or flag football, things like that. And then if um, we also like to put in a little structure for the little guys too. So some something small. Um, so hopefully we can squeeze all that in one area, but we just kind of, we've always wanted this, something different than just monkey bars, but something where you're really exercising your body and better yet, now they have these things that are for all ages. So, um, you know, even the seniors. So what a, we thought, what a cool opportunity to do an intergenerational exercise play space in this area. And um, the area we're looking at, Luann will bring up the plans in a little bit, I think, but about 75 feet by 75 feet, we'd like to do poured in place, the, the rubber nice surfacing, which is just um, something we've always wanted in one of our parks. And it's, it's pretty expensive, but you don't have to replace it. It's completely wheelchair accessible. So we could get some equipment that, you know, allows the wheelchairs to be used. And this is, of course, for um, a Land and Water Conservation Fund grant proposal. Oh, there we go. So this is the, that blob area is the area that we have to play with. So I think there's a lot of wiggle room in there to do some pretty cool stuff. You know, maybe a few pieces that kind of appeal maybe to the older generation and then some of the ninja-y stuff, maybe more on the east. Um, so we are proposing today, we're having our public hearing to collect comments on this space. Luann, would you like to show some ideas? There we go. Um, that one on the top is kind of a, um, you know, a, a circuit kind of a thing for the kids. These are just some ideas and you can pick parts and pieces. So really using your body. Now we're getting into a little bit more of the intergenerational stuff. And you can see, Luann, can you go back to that other picture? You can see in this top one how they... Um, combined kind of some traditional play areas and the exercising for the adults, which of course, as we know, even though it says ages 13 and plus, I think our Wanch Park ones say that too, but the kids love them so much. So, you know, we thought this was a pretty cool idea. There's some other fun exercise. Lots of cool stuff. This is the, the structure here is the one that we have at Hillbrook, which is a really a well-priced structure. Um, it the best thing about it, it has a little track on the side that people, kids can put their um, Hot Wheels, their Matchbox cars down the side, like a little roller coaster. But it doesn't take up much space, and that's just a well-loved structure by the little kids. We'd love to squeeze something like that. And this is this one, the Venti, we also have at Hillbrook. Lots of play value for that. So that, as you can see, ages five to twelve. I don't know that we'll have the space for something this large, but. These, these two structures that we just went past have just, we've gotten a lot of compliments. The kids really like those. Um, and if I may add just a couple things here before we get into um, uh, commissioner discussion is, you know, we just want to do something different than we have at any other park. And of course the ninja stuff is real popular now and it promotes physical fitness. Um, and so we were just kind of talking about, is there a way that we could, um, uh, have our traditional play for the smaller little ones, but then also something that's a little more challenging for all age groups. And with pickleball being right there, could easily see the seniors taking advantage of that as well. So, and then going to this port in place, we could easily put a little track around the perimeter or a sprint track. So it would, you know, promote people walking or running or doing something on it. So then that adds additional play value. So we're pretty excited about this. It's pricey. The, the surfacing itself is going to run us probably around 150000 which is a lot. And that's probably on the lower, probably on the lower side, but about one hundred and fifty. but you could put designs in it. It can be colorful. 
Um, and then also then the equipment on top, I know we were thinking of 300, but maybe we go to 350,000 for the project cost. And, um, and then we use 50%, uh, which would be 175,000 each way. So that is the proposal for that. And of course, all the specifics, can, we have tons of time to gather more public input um, to decide exactly what it is, but that's kind of the vision we're going for at this particular time. Thank you so much, Luann and Jane, for your presentation. Those are some wonderful ideas, and I appreciate the ability of seeing the math and, and some of your thoughts. Um, I think that's incredibly helpful today. Um, at this time, I think it'd be good to open it up to our commissioner comments and questions. Yes, Commissioner Stevens. Oh, sorry, Mary, you have your hand up there. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry, um, Mary, I didn't see. I apologize. No, I was actually, I was actually scratching my face, but thanks, oh, Mary. Oh, <laughs> oh no, there's a hand up on your screen. That's oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I can't see it Got on it. Mary's screen. Hmm. Oh, you know what it is? <laughs> that's interesting. It's my icon that's up in your corner. Hmm. And it's my it and it's a hand, which I've never seen that before. Okay, sorry, <laughs> Luann. What's the longevity of that play surface? It says you said that it doesn't need to be replaced. I don't think anything's like that. It'll need to be replaced sometime. Or Michigan weather. What does it have effect on that kind of thing? Yeah, I I, I needed to rephrase that. The maintenance is minimal compared to our um, engineered wood fiber, which requires almost weekly maintenance, and then annually we replenish it. And so it's really ongoing maintenance all the time. Um, I'm I believe it is a 15 year warranty on that. Uh, Jane, I don't know if you have that information handy, but we can check on that. Um, and like I said, that's just what we're looking at now. We do have a lot of time to to vent this out a little bit, but um, uh, I'm thinking it's probably 10, 10 to 15 years. Yeah, and, and Mike, do you have any idea of that? Is that something that the uh, the commission looks at, looks at really well, like that type of place surface, or anybody do have mean, any idea um, on that? Did you mean the recreation yeah. grants, Mark? Yeah, right, grants, folks. Yeah. Um, I think that the more early excitement that Jane, who does a, such a great job, can create in her narrative, the better. And Jane, I think that while you were making the presentation, if I recall, City of Grand Rapids put in the very first one in the way back, and their directors have changed. But to address what you're saying, Mark, I think it'd be great if we had examples that if Jane found an example or two of something in this uh, general uh, climate rather than Arizona or Florida that has uh, used port in place and it's worked well and endured the, you know, endured the test of time. And you can uh, massage it too, Jane, if, if the uh, Grand Rapids one or Flint or what, but Grand Rapids, I'm pretty sure is it. If it's not worked well, probably there's been some real improvements in port and places duration. Mary? Thank you. Yeah, I was gonna say Mary. Or... Am, I'm sorry, I thought Amy was first. Okay, Amy? Just a couple of things. I was just gonna say, I mean, most playgrounds that I'm aware of use port in place um, to meet accessibility standards. So I think there's probably quite a few ex recent examples. I know the DNR uses it. Patriarch Park has poured in place, although that was seven years ago that they did that at their big playground build. So I do think it would be easy to, to get some references. My other question was, so the, the poured in place uh, is 150-ish. Again, how much was the equipment? I'm just trying to do the math in my head, what you think the estimate on the equipment would be. I think Lou, Louie is going to bring up our rough cost estimate. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I jumped the gun. <laughs> no, you didn't, Amy. That's perfect timing. Or is that what you're bringing up, Louie? You're on mute. You're on mute, Louie. Um, let me see. I can look for it too. 
I think um, Luann had mentioned a total of three. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, 120 maybe so you know there's some incidentals so that that 129 was just the poured in place and then the, and then it requires a gravel sometimes it requires kind of almost like a concrete curbing so these questions these numbers are a little really fuzzy um but we think at least 120 120 equipment. playground equipment okay any additional questions or comments before we open it up to public comment? Oh, yes, Commissioner Harris. Just quickly, um, I wanted to add to Amy's comments. The DNR has used that surface for quite a few years now. And uh, I think we talked about this at the last meeting, but part of the staff that's with the grants group right now, including Dan Moore, it actually headed up a study a number of years ago regarding the best surfacing for the playgrounds. And the important place was by far um, the superior product, even though it was more expensive. It lasts longer. My understanding is I think with some of them, you can actually, if you have a problem in it, you can actually splice in a new piece and mm -hmm. it's easy to maintain the liability aspects. Uh, anything to maintain year to year as far as the wood chips or the fiber was really becoming a nightmare, at least for the staff at the DNR. So my belief is that that group is very much on board with this type of surfacing and would maybe even require that if uh, they had the option to do that. I love the intergenerational idea too, um, Jane and Luann. I think that's a great addition, something different mm -hmm. that's not been done before, perfect place for that. Um, I think it's a great job. I completely agree with that. And I was, I was gonna say, I can't tell you how many times when my kids were little that I would stand there watching them play and I'd be like, <laughs> I'm just standing here, like, what, what am I going to do? So if I could, you know, work out during that time or stretch or do some different things to be physically active myself um, while standing there, I think um, that's really great. And I, I agree that intergenerational piece is really wonderful. Um, so I thank you so much um, for you both putting together this presentation today. Um, Commissioner McDonald, did you have a comment? <laughs> Everything is in a sense reverse so and I go left it goes right so I think my hand was in Engadine there Mark um, based on Mackinac Island real quick because I know we have a shortage of time and Jane you're going to do some great research I'm sure but uh, quick um, tip or I don't know suggestion DNR with the help of the friends of Leonor State Park and the Michigan Cares for Tourism program put a humongous in a sense uh, Lou probably about the same size piece of play equipment and play structure at Lena State Park, 100 feet from the lighthouse. And I hope it's been a big success. Mary, Paul Peterson worked on that chore that day. I worked on trails and um, I'm sure Paul has great memories of that. Uh, Paul Peterson has great memories of that, Amy. But um, tonight there is a Lena State Park open meeting and I will ask Debbie Jensen how, how that's worked at Lena State Park, which is pretty remote. And that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm all set. Well, it, and it could be we might need to all take a road trip there to check it out in person. Sounds fun. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. We'll go ahead and open it up for public comment at this time. Stephen, do we have anyone on the phone? Well, if you want to give people the opportunity to call in at 517-349-1232, we certainly can take public comment for those people who are participating via home TV. Uh, everyone in the meeting has been promoted to panelists at this point, and you could ask them to raise their hand using the raise hand feature, uh, and we can uh, accomplish public comment either way. I'm hearing no telephone calls at this time. Thank you, Stephen. Um, if anybody would like to make a comment during this public comment section regarding the um, the grant for Towner Park. Please raise your hand and we'll call on you. Um, okay, it looks like nobody's raising their hand at this time and we don't have any callers on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing for the Towner Road grant um, application. And again, thank you, Luann and, and Jane, for pulling that together and presenting. Um, I look forward to seeing what comes of this and Appreciate all the work that you continue to do to make Towner Road an accessible 
a park for, for all families. So thank you so much. Um, and we will take action later on the agenda. Um, next in the agenda is the actual approval of the agenda. So I, I need someone to motion and second that approval. Chair McDonald, or Commissioner McDonald and Commissioner Stevens. Thank you. Um, and then we're gonna move on next to our agenda item four, which is presentations. Um, the commission is meeting during a short time period today. Um, so we'd like to kind of keep presentations to uh, five minutes if possible, five minutes or less, um, and just appreciate everybody's um, time and attention on that. So thank you. Up first is Griffin Porter to present on his final report of the dog agility equipment. Griffin, have you joined us today? Hi there, it's Thomas Porter. Hi, Thomas. And Griffin is starting his project soon. He's going to uh, start up the um, fundraising phase okay. starting in March. He's got some uh, swimming competitions coming up. So he will probably do a coordinated effort with maybe uh, we talked to um, Coach Mike earlier about sending an email out to uh, some of the dog park users if they want to continue to contribute to that. But we're going, that's where we're set right now. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Porter? Okay, Mr. Porter, thank you and Griffin so gotcha. much for your support of the dog park and we're really <laughs> excited. Oh, the commissioner. I, I do have one question about uh, fundraising. Will you be doing a, a GoFundMe page um, that can be shared with a lot of folks or just doing it on your own at different places like swim meets and stuff like that? Yeah, we'll have to uh, discuss that with the council. Um, certainly, that's, that's a possibility. I've seen GoFundMe. I just have to fill out the application. Uh, can drives are still pretty popular, and uh, and of course, direct donations, etc. Yeah, but we can do that, Mark. Thank you. Let yeah, let us know because I'll I'm very willing to share all that information and make a donation toward you guys. Um, mm -hmm. I'll to see those dogs up there jumping around. It'd be great. Oh, you betcha. Wonderful. Well, no, there's no other additional uh, comments or questions. I mean, just want to thank you for the update. And we look forward to um, seeing this project. You betcha. All right. Thank you so much. I'm next on the agenda for presentations. Is Austin to do a presentation on his project related to bat houses. Is Austin? He's on right now. He yes. was on Tom Porter's. Oh, oh, hi. <laughs> hey. Nice to see you, Austin. Thank yeah. you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Go ahead and 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 kick it off and share with us um, a little bit about your project. Yeah, so as your uh, you know, information will show, you know, it's about bad houses. I, along with help from, you know, Mr. Porter, Mr. Stuckey, and some and some other uh, youth. Ah. You know, we got five different bed houses set up, and and, and I'm sure you'll have the you know, information on where on uh, the different parks. Lou, were you able to uh, pass out the uh, the final yes. report for the team? Okay. Yes, everyone has a report in front of them. So they have they have a copy of this. Okay. okay. So you can show them the pictures. If there's anything in particular you'd like yeah. to find out about your report, that would be great. Right, back there. Okay. Yeah, so here's a, some of the... Uh, Towards the back, there are some pictures that he'd like to describe for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so the, fir the first one is the present is the presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, it will know is... Um, yeah, it, it, yes, the, uh, is the... You know, it, is the... Is the youth that were... You know, that built the bad houses... The no, no, uh, the finished projects. Yep. And and then the one uh, below that is me with my, you know, uh, with uh, just all the finished bed houses lined up, all uh, ducks in a row, took place stuff at the bed houses. And then another one is seeing one of the bad houses. That'd be on the following page. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then you know, seeing one of the bad houses hung up, and then the one to its right is—I I, believe—I believe that's 
no me. you in the in, me. in the picture. Yeah. Uh, no, he no he he's working on. No, he's working on a no uh, hanging it up. Yeah. And then uh, if you would flip the page, there it no the uh, top left is me. No, show no. Um, ex explaining the different parts of the bad house, how it gets put together, some you no know, necessary information sp in specifics with how with how to um, with with how to put it together because I had to use tape to keep the bad house the the front of it. Uh, you no. Know, uh, because there's three individual pieces of wood that were put together, so I had to use tape to hold it together. But they had to take the tape off when it and when it was re ready. Otherwise, if it gets stuck in the bad house, then mm -hmm. the top right is more hanging. Yeah, we have more hanging up, and then there, and then the bottom left is more hanging up, and then mm -hmm. the bottom right is me and some of the youth that helped act to actually hang up. The bad houses, yeah. and that's the pictures. Austin, thank you so very much for describing those pictures. And it looks like it took a lot of work and planning and time and attention. And it's just yes. really incredible. I'm glad that the bats have five new homes in our township. And um, we, I, this is a fun fact about our family is that we sometimes will take walks at night so that we can look at the bats. And so. Um, just thank you for putting that together. What a wonderful project. And yeah. are there any other comments or questions of Austin from fellow park commissioners? Um, I guess as a former, well, we've always been told, uh, Tom, that we're always Boy Scout dads. Uh, <laughs> I think we all would like to give Austin, and this is a Boy Scout insider, we'd like to give him a big hand. <laughs> There it is. There it is. <laughs> Round of applause, Austin. Great yeah, job. Too. <laughs> it's funny, people don't do the you know, actual like motion of yeah. no, they don't do that enough. I don't think. <laughs> You're right. You say round of applause, but it's just mm -hmm. clapping. Well, right. well, what's the point? Just say <laughs> applaud if you no. Know, yeah. Waste of words. <laughs> Austin. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciated it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, one more round of applause for Austin, everybody. Nice job. I'm thank still trying to figure you. out how he did five boxes for 25 bucks. Like we had the yeah, we had the bat houses donated about yeah. four years ago. Nice. And so they've been kind of collecting dust and mothballs and and so uh, I I suggest that to Austin as a project because all you had to do is buy the screws and the lag bolts and find folks to help out. So mm. you know, we're kind of a kind of a no-brainer to use the tools at hand. Yep. That's great. I kind of figured awesome it was something like that, Thank a you. donation, but that's, uh, that's yep. great. Good job. Yep. Austin did a great job. Like I said the, the before, um, a previous meeting, uh, he wrote up all these things. He was the one that helped design them, build them, and we made sure that you know he did the leadership and he did a great job. Thank you. Yep. Well, it's not want that. <laughs> Hey, Chair, look, we may want to just take action with this project right Thank now, you. and um, uh, they're free then to leave the meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Action okay. item uh, A, number two. Oh. Yep. Okay, I'm just finding the... Is the action listed? Is that out? Just to accept with gratitude uh, the project from Austin okay. building the bat house. Okay. Why am I not able under action? You've got an action packet. Yes, I have that. I just can't find the. Hmm. Okay. Well, well, we can accept accept with action the um the project of the bat homes and um and gratitude and appreciation. All Thank those you very favor? much. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed. Thank you, Austin. Commissioner Van Antwerp, did you want to say something? Or were you just, okay. No. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you all.
Thank you. Um, moving on to agenda item number five, which is public comment. Anybody um, open for public comment at this time? Stephen will open up the phone line um, and and also um, anybody that's in the meeting currently can raise their hand and we'll call upon you for public comment. Once again, that telephone number is 517-349-1232 for those people uh, watching via home TV. Uh, and yes, the raise hand feature should be a function on your Zoom toolbar if you care to speak at this time. I am seeing no hands and I hear no telephone calls. Okay, great. Um, we'll go on to approving of the minutes from our February 9th meeting so that we can place those on file. Commissioner Second. and I, I didn't know. Wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's, there's just a, a small inconsistency between, okay. which, you know, it's saying that Amanda joined at 533, but the meeting kicked off at 1203. So um, oh. just if it could be approved with those changes. So. I didn't Take necessarily know that you joined at 533 out. Just remove that. Okay. I um, I move approval as uh, with those uh, minor changes included. So I move for approval. Then I'll second it. How's that? Mary, thank you for um, pointing that out that yes. I did not join five hours late. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, these, these are public and, you, you know. Absolutely. No, that's why those of us who are pay attention to detail are very appreciated because I didn't even notice that I joined five hours late. So thank you. <laughs> um, moving on to agenda item number seven, communications. We all received communications that um, will be placed on file. Luann, is there anything in particular you'd like to call attention to during this meeting today? You know, just, just a couple of things. We uh, conducted an ice fishing derby um, in conjunction with the DNR free family uh, free fishing weekend although we had to postpone it to the following weekend because of uh, frigid temperatures. But um, of course, our uh, beloved commissioner, Mark Stevens was on hand and uh, contributed greatly to that event. And then it was a family affair because his son, Dan, created a beautiful video that I shared with everyone that is now on the township website, a video of the event. Um, also included in your packet is a thank you to Dr. Paul Morrow for donating polls, and then also to Daniel for um, creating that wonderful video. Um, also included is uh, from the um, from Emma Campbell with the Meridian Conservation Corps. She does the core report and uh, just has some wonderful, wonderful programs um, and accomplishments listed. And the graphics are amazing. Um, and then the Harris Nature Center has has a communication of press release about attract birds and butterflies to your garden with native plants and it is promoting their native plant sale, uh, which all orders must be in by Friday, April 23rd. Okay, okay great. I, I wanna say thank you to um, Mr. Stevens' um, son for the video. I, I highly recommend the public taking a look at that video. If you've ever been nervous about ice fishing or taking your child to that event or just want more information about what it's like, I found it. Um, you know, highly informative and just showcasing what a, a wonderful event that is for families in our community. So um, just want to say thank you again um, to the team that put that together. And it was just, that event was incredible. So, and all of the, the donations of the fishing rods, um, just so seeing those children like grab those old fishing rods, just, I don't, I'm not even a fisher, um, and, but it just felt so nostalgic and just really, um, an incredible bridge of like, sorry, I have a bug flying around, um, you know, fishing from the past to now. It was just really lovely. So it, it was fun. It was a really fun event. We had a good time. The cool thing is that all the kids were using the same fishing rod that they made previously. So we, we actually did that little, um, uh, we sent out a video to have them put together their own rods and everybody brought them with them. It was fun. It was a good time. And uh, they, they're very excited about uh, getting those rods and re the rods for, uh, uh, to take home with them, you know, a little, little antique stuff. Um, a couple of the school teachers around here, uh, Steve Bladder was, was there. He was really helpful. He was walking around with all the kids and showing them different things. And Ben Panetta came out there 
and he drilled all of the ice holes. Um, you can say that on public television, ice holes. Um, <laughs> Uh, and he drilled a ton of them, and it it was just great. He couldn't be there. He he was just leaving in the video. Daniel got there a little later, um, but uh, Ben had another commitment. But what a great guy he is, too, as well, and was there helping all those kids. And it was kind of slushy out there, but it, it was fun. It was it was a good time. Kids got to experience, you know, great, great, interesting weather, cold weather, but slushy. It was an interesting day. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I think at a time when we're all looking for ideas and ways to connect as families outdoors, what a, what a great opportunity to do something like that in the winter. And so thank you. Um, any comments or questions about the communications before we move on to action items? Uh, we need a motion to uh, accept and place on oh, file. Sorry. Yes, I move to you. place them on file, accept and place them. Second. Okay. And Commissioner Ferris, I noticed you put your hand up with that, what you were just quickly, I just wanted to thank Emma. When I received the newsletter, I was just honestly surprised at how creative and, and interesting it was and entertaining. And I, I, I just really appreciate it. Just to give her some kudos for that. That was it. Thank you, Amanda. Second that. Let's place that on file. Closer to a completion, but they were not. But at least they provided a brief update. And uh, so that will be on a future um, okay. agenda. So that one can be removed. And then we're on to... Item B, which is the microfood pantry request. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Um, so Luann, at this point, should I, do you want me to just open this up for discussion or how should we move forward? Uh, why don't I introduce it a little bit first and then and then we can open it for discussion. And Kelly uh, Bianche has, is joining us today to answer any questions you may have. At our previous meeting, um, I had just received the request, I think like 30 minutes before we met. And so um, I didn't have a lot of chance to research it. In the meantime, I found the township board had, had adopted a, an emergency order um, that would allow these in our community. Um, and there was an application process, which Kelly went through and filled out the application. Two of those sites listed were Wanch Park and Hartrick Park. Um, and so um, those are the two she's interested in. I believe what the park commission had questions about uh, based on comments from the last meeting was really the maintenance and management of. I don't know if it was so much about the placement because that can be done working with staff, but it's like, how often is it maintained and managed and can people drop things off and how often are the Girl Scouts checking it? I think it was just kind of the nuts and bolts you had some questions about. So I invited Kelly to join us today. Um, so she is here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, so hopefully they'll be, they're able to move forward with their projects. Thank you so much, Luann, for providing that um, yeah. background information and recap, because I remember it did come up really quickly right before our last meeting. Um, I guess, has the, the application process, can you help me understand a little bit more, is, the, is her project then already sort of approved by the township, or is no. there, okay. No, um, basically the township has to approve it, but since the Park Commission is the governing body of parks, and the two of her requests were in parks, it's really your decision okay. at this are, point. And then are those the only two locations? Okay. No, I have eight locations. Initially there was five. The library one's actually a sister troop to us um, that she said she wanted to put one in. So I'm not sure if that's who got the approval. That would be the township board. So Kelly, yeah, I think it would be really helpful for us to all hear a little bit about um, the, you know, the idea where this came about, kind of why um, why in the parks, and maybe if you could talk a little bit more about um, how it's going to be maintained, how who's gonna be checking on them regularly. Um, and yeah, if you could just help us understand a little bit more about that, that'd be helpful. Yeah, so every year uh, the Girl Scouts, each troop has a take action project. So it has to be a project that's not just a one-time thing, it has to keep giving. Um, so this year, we've kind of done two different things. We're making hygiene packages for homeless children in Ingham County. And then on top of that, wanting to do these hygiene houses, which are very similar to the little libraries in size. Um, just instead of putting books in there, we would be putting hygiene products in there, as well as maybe, you know, some non-perishable foods, granola is low or anything needs to be updated. They could just communicate through the Facebook page. Um, and so that way we could reach community members too for donations as well as upkeep. 
but it would be our Girl Scouts project. Great. Um, any commissioners have any comments or questions that they'd like to ask Kelly? Commissioner McDonald. Um, Kelly, it's okay if I call you Kelly, I imagine. Yep. Mm -hmm. I did review our packet, but I still think I and we might benefit from just a 30 second day in the life of a of a pantry. If I open the door of one, what would I likely find in there, for example? Sure. So um, again, you know, trying to stick with the hygiene products more than the canned foods, but um, certainly those things could be in there. So we'd be looking at, you know, toilet paper, sanitary napkins, shampoo, toothpaste, toothbrushes, just anything that, you know, maybe if somebody is on like a food stamp type program, they're not necessarily going to get those products through a food stamp type program. Um, so it'd be kind of supplemental to that. Title of the executive order from the township supervisor. And that's the name of the process we're going through. Not necessarily exactly what's inside the box, but it's obviously um, extended beyond food. But that's the reason for the title, is that it follows in line with um, the organization of this entire effort. Thank you. Um, I, I know that in our previous conversation, I think the consensus was is that we were supportive of these types of opportunities for the community to have access to additional um, supplies as needed. Um, I, I find it interesting that, you know, um, it's not, it's outside of food too, it's hygiene. And I think that that's really helpful. Um, I appreciate the placement of them being at Hartrick, given that it's close to the high school there and, and potentially might, you know, be a, a way for students to have access to those supplies if they don't get them at home. Um, one of the things we did discuss in our previous meeting was related to, um, you know, maybe trying this out in one park and seeing how it goes and then seeing if there's a need to expand it to additional parks. I wanted to know how the commissioners were feeling about that idea, if you had any concerns around um, doing this, you know, in two parks right off the bat, or if we, I think there was um, some discussion about that previously, about maybe starting off with a couple of these um, and seeing how the, the process goes of keeping them up and making sure that they were being accessed and utilized. And um, so I wanna put that out to the group today to see if there was any thoughts around that um, or any suggestions. Commissioner Stevens. Yeah, my, my concern at, at the beginning, it wasn't really a concern because I think this is a, a really good idea is that, um, you know, Girl Scouts move on, Girl Scout parents move on. How do they get maintained over the year? over the years, you know, if we do have them and they are successful, if that troop is taking it on as a mission of the troop um, in this Lansing area or Girl Scouts as a whole, um, you know, and and uh, and who can put the, the stuff in there? Is it only Girl Scouts that can put it in there? Like with the little loner libraries, people can bring their books in and put them in and then take stuff out, you know, that they, you know, they kind of, kind of a sharing thing but this is more the the items are depleted um so that 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 was my question is how do you encourage the public to actually put things in there as well or go through an entity like the girl scouts that yeah. Was my, that's my... yeah so initially the girl scouts would stock them or you know do drives to get them stocked and then afterwards you know we would definitely hope the community would want to add to that um, but if they don't, we would be willing to continue to make sure that they stay stocked. So, you know, encouraging the public definitely to help us out, um, but not necessarily that they have to. And if something did happen, you know, over time, if our troop disbanded or the girls get older and graduate, um, it would be a project where either we would then dismantle the homes or we would look for another troop to pass them on to then to have responsibility for them at that point. Are there any items that are off limits that you don't request being put in there or anything like that? Any concerns? Um, you know, the only thing that I've kind of wavered on, I guess, was razors. Um, that would be the only thing that I was on the fence about just because it would be in public areas. We would not necessarily know who's going to be taking those items. 
Um, and I would hate for something terrible to happen, you know, or children to get a hold of a razor or something like that. So that would be the only item I think that I would be iffy on a little bit. I think one of my, um, I just, I, I find this as a, a wonderful idea um, to provide access to the community. And I'm always trying to think of ways to do that. I think um, one of my concerns, and I haven't seen, I don't believe that I've seen um, the sustainability plan as well as how do we, what if in three months it's that way, then that's okay. Um, but if others are feeling that way, I think it's, I think it warrants having an, um, some further discussion and maybe a work session or something where we dive into this a little bit more deeply. And Kelly, so that we can support you all with a plan that helps provide access to these and also brings um, some comfort and security around like what would be needed should any of these things happen. Um, so I just, I put that out there and, and wanna know what others thoughts or comments are. I do think that the um, application mentioned something about that. Like if something happened and you guys did not want them to be there any longer, I think it gave, I can't remember, I want to say it gave me like seven days or something like that to take them down. And then if not, you know, whatever property they're on could dismantle them. So there was a, a backup plan for removal of them. Um, I, I think that it was the seven days. I can't believe Number three. It's on, under definitions, number one, under the emergency regulation, under definitions, and then it's number three. Yeah, so basically at your discretion, you know, I would have seven days to remove them or you would remove it for us. Um, so I think that if something, you know, if the same one keeps getting vandalized, obviously it probably needs to be removed or relocated completely. Um, and, you know, that would just be up to you guys. Yes, Commissioner. Here. Thank you, Chairman Lick. Kelly, I had a couple quick questions. And one had to do with within the troop, is there a particular leader or a position assigned that's going to take charge of this and monitor it and make sure assignments are followed up on, you know, beyond, say, beyond this year even? Yeah, um, so I'm the troop leader, and then I do have a co-leader here with Carla um, in the meeting as well. But we, you know, the leaders would make sure that that's happening. And if, you know, the scouts aren't going on their schedules, the, it would fall back on the leaders for us to go and just make sure that they're being maintained. But basically, everybody that is an active Girl Scout in our troop would have, you know, their time frame of when they should go and do the rounds, and they'd be rotated enough that they wouldn't be doing it, you know, every week. We have um, 20 Girl Scouts currently. So if we went every week even, you know, to maintain and check on them, it, you know, each girl could go two or three times a year. So it wouldn't be, I don't think a heavy burden. So both of the leaders would be assigned as the point people for this. Yeah, I mean, we have multiple leaders, but yeah, I mean, initially I'm the main contact. So I'm the, the head troop leader. So it would fall on me um, just to make sure that they're being maintained. Thank you. So my second question had to do with monitoring how you envision actually making those assignments. And um, would that include, say, the weekly monitoring? Is that something that if someone has gotten into the box, unfortunately, say, spread some of the contents all around or uh, something just short of vandalized, but I, I was thinking more just spreading the contents around, um, are they also responsible and would know that they need to clean that up and then they are checking the inventory each week? Yeah, so they would check the box um, itself just to make sure that it's in good standing. You know, um, they're made out of wood, so maybe make sure there's not splinters or chunks missing or whatever, um, to see if they need to be maintained or cleaned up. And then yes, making sure that the area stays clean as well as the inventory is up. So then if inventory is low on one of them, you know, they would report back to me and we'd either restock it or we could post on the Facebook page um, to community members saying, you know, we're looking for X, Y, and Z items for the hygiene houses. And then they could stock them or we could stock them, either one. 
you have anything along that maybe could share with us a checklist, like a short checklist even that will be given to those families so that each week they know exactly what to look for and then they would have something to prompt them to know for sure what they're supposed to be doing there that week? Sure, I could email that in, sure. Yeah, so you have something like that already developed? Mm -hmm. And then we also have a list of the items that we'd be looking for to go in the houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be helpful. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Commissioner Van Antwerp. Um, so my other thought, then this came up last month, I think we all originally had a few concerns that were legitimate, but I feel like a lot of those for at least for me, um, I feel a lot better about this you know, kind of very um, generous offer that you're making to the community. My thought though, and when we thought it was more food-based, our thought was, you know, how do we know that this hasn't been, the food hasn't been tainted with, or it's gone, you know, expired or whatever. Um, and it sounds like a lot of that won't be as big of a deal, but it almost seems like maybe, are you thinking on the side of the, of it to have like rules, like, it should be in its original packaging, you know, like I'm thinking like a toothbrush or toothpaste or just so we know that someone's not bringing something from home or it's been tainted with those kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, I think that mainly we would just want everything to remain in its original packing. Right. But people donating to it would know that as well, because if right. somebody put something in there and then the next day someone grabs it, but one of your troop wasn't coming till the third day. You know what I mean? Just so people donating, they know they're doing it the right way. Yeah. And I thought about maybe getting a sheet of some sort and having it laminated on the inside yeah. of the door that just kind of outlined a little bit yeah. for the public so they know. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And then just, I just wanted to make a comment that I feel like I'm a lot more comfortable with this than maybe a month ago when I had a lot of initial concerns, um, especially knowing that the township passed an emergency order, I think is what, how you phrased it. Um, I kind of feel like that takes a little bit of burden off the commissioner, the, us as commissioners to, you know, that this completely, I feel like, you know, we should probably support what the township is, is comfortable with. Um, I just wanted to make that comment. I guess I've, I sort of had a shift in thinking in the last month, especially with some of the information you presented today. So thank you. Thank you for those comments, Commissioner Van Antwerp. And um, I, yes, Commissioner McDonald. And, and I know our time is short and Kelly has donated a lot of time today too. So I wanna thank her. Um, with the idea of, of possibly getting something okay today um, and that Hartrick is locked from dust to dawn now would right uh, would the commissioners be amenable to just uh approving launch for the you know to just take heartrick out of the proposed resolution and go with launch that's it i mean go ahead for lou yes please. um I guess I would just like to make an overall statement. Kelly, we think this is a wonderful idea for our community. So don't don't feel like everybody's ganging up, but there's a, I appreciate all the different perspectives on this. And on the surface, it sounds like, oh, this is really great. But I think we've dived into um, some interesting topics with this. And so um, I think the maintenance and management, like I started out saying of, you know, are people just gonna come dump a bunch of stuff? And so it looks like outside of goodwill um, at the base of each of these is one. Um, I just think that if you you do it well, um, and I and I think two two are fine. If you're looking at a, uh, it's up to the commission what they want to do. But um, I think if there's like in the very beginning to make sure that it's checked regularly, by regularly at least once a week, um, and to make sure it's all everything looks clean, it's well kept. I think then there'll be a good process to start out on the right foot. But if people go there and there's stuff strewn on the ground every time they go, it's it's not going to work. So starting strong is really, really important. And um, I had put in a motion here for the commissioner's consideration that um, maybe after two or three months, you come back with a little uh, report. Uh, let us know how you think it's going and how it could be improved. Are there things that we could do to help? Are there things the community could do to help? Like I said, I think this, in my mind, and it's not my decision, but I think it's a great idea. Um, 
Uh, we just need to make sure that it's done right and well because it's in our parks and we're the ones that are going to get the phone calls on it and my maintenance staff are going to be the ones to say oh my gosh it's all over the ground again and so they're real concerns that are being expressed around the around the table here so um i believe we're supportive we just want to make sure that it's managed properly that's really the bottom line on and this for me yeah and luann i appreciate you kind of kind of pulling all the comments and and thoughts together and i think it is important to share that I don't think anybody um, here today is saying that we're not supportive of, of providing these opportunities for greater access for community members. Um, I think the operational pieces of it, we just need to figure out. And so I think um, from my perspective, um, as chair, I'd like to postpone this motion today. Um, I'd like to come back to this conversation um, after um, Kelly, you know, after it's been implemented in a couple places around the township and um, we can see in two to three months how it's going. Um, completely open to having this dialogue further. Um, would love to see some of the comments or the documents that you've put together um, that Commissioner Ferris asked about and um, would love to see some of that kind of in, in action before we approve it in the park specifically. But I really think that this is wonderful, um, support it, um, and look forward to working through that so that it can be implemented in the parks in the future. I just think I'd feel a little bit more comfortable, um, and hopefully I'm not speaking outside of the, but I've, I've seen some nodding of heads as I've been talking, and, and some, um, I think there's just enough uh, question about it on those details where um, having greater understanding before we approve a motion for them to be in the parks would be very helpful. Okay. I want to thank you so much for bringing this opportunity to the township and to Meridian um, Parks. And I want to thank you for your time today. And, and, and if we don't hear from you in two to three months, I might ask Luann if she could reach out to you, um, just because we would love to hear back from you um, and would like to make this happen. So um, I appreciate it so much. Sure, look, could I, look, could I please uh, uh, clarify my comment earlier? I think in the motion was to maybe approve one or two and then ask for a recap. Right. But, okay, I just want to make sure that was clear. But it's, yeah. it's up to you guys whether you want to vote on it or not vote on it or whatever whatever action you want to take. Obviously, it's in your purview. so. Yeah. I'd like to motion to not vote on it today um, and to resume the conversation in two to three months. Yeah, I, I'd support that, yeah. but I'd also support doing a trial basis on it too with like yeah. one or two, but um, I think we should have some more discussion on it though. Yeah, like I, I liked your idea of having a, uh, uh, a, a working session or something like that about specifically about this with maybe some of the questions that, uh, that we proposed today or some of your thoughts, Kelly, maybe sent back to us and say, hey, you know, I was thinking about what you guys were talking about and here are some ideas and, you know, uh, what do you think about these? Or uh, thanks for bringing up some of these things we didn't think about before or, you know, something like that. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think we should have a work session on it and, and you know, do come back. But I, but I would vote to either way to also approve a trial on it too. So, but I would support the waiting. Commissioner Ferris. I actually love the idea of test driving some of those that are already approved in the township. And I think as Luann said, Kelly, that'll give your troop a chance to get off to a really strong start. That will give us a chance to kind of see, to, is that a good fit for the park system? Um, and then just, you know, two or three months down the road, it, you know, might be a real easy thing to, to go ahead and approve additional locations in the park system. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner McDonald? I, um, I'm not sure we would need to vote on a not vote, but that's up to you, uh, Chair Amanda. But um, I'm sure Kelly has a tight schedule too. Could Lou, Luann, could you share with us the date of our next in-person meeting? And I'd like to make a suggestion that if it is outdoors at a park, that it be at either Wanch or Hartrick so that Kelly could put that on her schedule now as a tentative time to join us. Yeah, That's our it. next meeting is May 11th at noon. And so we talked about um, potentially doing that outdoors at a, at a park location. 
Yes, Commissioner Van Antwerp. I was going to say something similar to Mike. Um, I, I feel like we should almost just schedule um, for Kelly to come back if she's available in May. Three months, seem, it seem, kind of seems like this is like a timely thing. So two months, May seems like the perfect time to maybe reconvene on this. And you'll have some information from your other locations. I guess June to me seems so down far down the road, especially for people that are in need right now. That was just a thought I had. And mosquitoes will be in the park in May. <laughs> Thank you so much. So Kelly, um, if you move forward um, without them being located in the parks for the next couple of months, how many are you're looking at having six, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there will be six in the community even if we don't have the two in the parks over the next couple of months. Okay. All right, we can put that on the agenda. Kelly, I hope you can join us in May um, and come back and we can um, go to a park and maybe even potentially think about including um, a visit to one of them that's in the, in the community. Um, so we look forward to receiving an update on that and, and seeing you in person. Great, thank you so much. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number C, which is the DNR um, grant submission. Do we need to? Right, um, if, if you don't mind, I can just start out with the introduction. The Park Commission conducted a, a, a public hearing earlier in this meeting today. Um, they are now prepared to um, read a motion that would support applying for playground equipment in a play area um, at Towner Road Park. And right now um, we are, we have in the motion currently a $300,000 project. The grant would go to the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which is a 50% grant, 50% local match. I know during the public hearing, we discussed maybe upping that to 350,000. So it would be 175 and 175 local, um, which I think is still up for discussion. And if there's a decision made on that, then what needs to happen is we actually need to read the motion into the record. Okay. So do you need us to have a discussion about increasing the amount, Luann? Correct. Okay. So we'll open it up for discussion about increasing the amount from 150 to 175 um, for the grant and then 175 for local match, right? bringing it to a total project amount of 350,000. I think that would be a better amount for us. Okay. I agree. Yeah, I'm supportive of that. Yeah, when it's timely, I'll support that too. Okay, sounds good. So it looks like we have um, a support for increasing that dollar amount. Um, so would anybody like to move, read the motion? And Luann is essentially in the motion um, right above the a resolution is attached for your consideration because I don't see it detailed. I apologize, I I'm not seeing it clearly defined in the- You don't have a resolution attached in your packet? I delivered one. Yeah, no, we I have a resolution. resolution. I don't have the motion language that's typically, do you want the entire resolution read? Or yes. Do you yes. Okay. I can do that. Okay. Okay. Parks and Recreation, De oh, is this what I'm supposed to read, this? The whereas, this the Michigan Department. I don't have that either. I delivered it to your home. Yeah. So I'm looking at Louis it all. it's this one, yes. correct? Okay. Yes. You read it. The very long <laughs> one. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to uh, pass because I can't find it in my packet. Okay. Okay, the following. I, I can read it, uh, Amanda, Chair, if you'd like. Would you like me to do that? That sounds great, Commissioner McDonald. Thank you. At an electronic meeting of the Park Commission of the Charter Township of Meridian Ingham County, Michigan, held on the ninth day of March, 2021 at 12 p.m. Following a resolution was offered by Commissioner McDonald and supported by Commissioner uh, Ferris. Whereas Michigan DNR accepts grant requests from local units of government to assist in the development and acquisition of recreation properties. And whereas it is possible to have up to 50% of the total project cost funded by the LWCF program 
And whereas the Park Commission is interested in leveraging local park millage funds by obtaining supplemental grant funding for park projects whenever possible, and whereas Meridian Township has prepared a grant application for submission to the Land and Water Conservation Fund for $350,000 of improvements to Town and Road Park, consisting of a play space to improve and expand recreation opportunities in the road park with a total project cost of $350,000. The 50% local match of $175,000 will be funded by the park millage with the remaining 50% $175,000 funded by the Federal Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. I think that's, I can stop there. Yes, you can. And we'll do a roll call vote, correct? Because yes. It, okay. Commissioner Stevens? Uh, yes. Commissioner Ferris? Yes. Commissioner Van Antwerp? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right. It passes. Uh, Luann, thank you for bringing this to us today and good luck. Jane and Luann, I look forward to seeing what um, what this looks like and, and hopefully getting this approved so that we can bring a play structure to Town Road. I know that's been something that's been on our agenda for some time now, so. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna move on to item D, which is the Lake Lansing Goose Management request that we received. Oh, my, my D says artificial ice rink and bid award. That is not what my D says. <laughs> I was, how did you get that? There. <laughs> artificial ice rink and D, that's interesting. Maybe that was an yeah. earlier, earlier. Oh, that was on your cover sheet. Yeah, that's it's on the name. cover sheet, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you mind if I introduce this one, uh, Chair Lick? Yes, please do. Okay, there, there was a resident who lives on Lake Lansing um, who is troubled by the amount of uh, Canadian geese on the lake, um, has requested a, a goose call on the lake. Um, I, sub I provided you supplemental materials, discussions with the DNR, um, uh, a public act uh, that uh, creates a, uh, a wildlife sanctuary. Um, there is a Lake Lansing advisory board and I would think at this particular time, this would not really be an action for the Park Commission to engage in. I think if there was an overall uh, uh, plan set forth by the advisory board, they would maybe come to us as a property owner on the lake. I don't see the Park Commission being a leader in, in this or even if it's possible. So I think if there's any action to be taken today, A, there could be none, or B, you could refer it to the advisory board for Lake Lansing. Those would be the two options for today. Um, thank you, Luann. Um, I appreciate you sending all this information forward and also including it in the packet today. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see that we need necessarily need to take action. Um, is this something that could be communicated directly to Mr. Card to go back to the Lake Lansing Advisory Board? Um, is that can do? Yep, I can okay. certainly do that. Okay, I, I feel um, that it warrants further discussion of the Lake Lansing advisory um, members and community before we were to take action. Right. So I, I want to open it up to discussion to the other commissioners to ensure that I'm not speaking solely just from my own perspective, but, um, but yes, I'll open it up. Anybody have any comments or thoughts? Um, Commissioner Stevens. Well, this uh, geese waterfowl are a federally migratory protected species. And um, I don't know if any advisory board like this would have, or Meridian Township would even have any authority of making a decision on whether they're called or not on their properties. Um, I think that some of the DNR information also stated that. I mean, they could do something if all the landowners wanted to do all of those mitigating things uh, beforehand, like planting buffer strips and 
you know, doing all the things that that kind of deter those animals, and they were still a serious problem, then then maybe they 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 might give you that. But again, there this is something that happens all over the United States. So I, I you know, I don't think we have authority. And sending it back to the Lake Lansing Advisory Board is is just going to lead down that same road. It's I, I don't think that they have the ability to do it. Um, but you know, that's, that's my thoughts on it. So I think, you know, referring him back to the advisory board, maybe they could bring something up to it, but I think they're going to get the same answer either way. It's federally protected species. So federally hunted species. So there's the idea of maybe hunting in Meridian Township on that lake. And I saw a bunch of things this year about hunters being on Lake Lansing um, on next door, actually, um, you know, shooting. And that's the first time I've seen people hunting Lake Lansing um, in forever. Um, I've never seen it. I've lived here for a long time. I've always wanted to hunt that lake myself and knew that it was a, you know, a, 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 what do they call it, a preserve or, you know, that there were rules against it. But then it is public water. And I guess these guys that they, they asked why they were hunting, uh, the COs said that it, they were, they were legal. So I don't know where the rules are and but hunting is a way to get rid of these birds. Thank you, Commissioner Ferris. I just want to say I appreciate the concerns of the residents and I also appreciate the work that staff has done to get better information on this for us because um, as I had said before in the note, I think it's a, it's a more collaborative discussion that goes well beyond us. And I, I absolutely agree with this being referred to the Lake Lansing Advisory Board uh, so that they can uh, even if only for an education aspect that they can work with their people on the um, lake and with the park and that that further you know brings more um, people into the discussion. Thank you. Commissioner Van Antwerp. More of a technical question. Um, we don't have park commission or parks land township parks land on Lake Lansing right isn't it across the street? No, we do have, it's called Lake Lansing Marsh and Spengler's Marsh. So we own at the, uh, the, the south end of Lake Lansing in the whole marshy area. Where the railroad tracks go through. Oh, that area. I keep thinking of the county park land. So it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I don't think any of our land preservation is on the lake itself. But over by, that's okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. I didn't realize that. Thank you. Right. But I mean, to your point, Amy, it, it's a very small, very, very small portion of like the total property. Right. Well, I keep thinking of the geese being over closer to the park. I, I mean, that's where I usually see them. And I, yeah. that's just, I can't get that visual out of my head, I guess. And um, perfect habitat for geese right there at that park. They can walk up onto the grass and start eating. I mean, yeah. They're I know animals, them. So, yeah. You know, and, and maybe there's recommendations that can be made to um, adjacent property owners who live on the lake to not mow all the way down to the water's edge. And that would be one way to um, reduce the, the geese coming into their yards because they won't jump. Yeah, Those planting spots. buffer strips are, that's a, that's a real good way to do, to solve that problem. Although if you own property on a lake, you know, you like to right, go down be to the beach to. and be able to drag your kayak there or whatever, yeah. go sit on the beach next to the water. So that, that's one of those things that a lot of people don't like to do, but it's very helpful. It also helps with any type of leaking septic systems or anything like that, or fertilizers on the lawn, or, you know, that, that's definitely a good lake practice is to plant buffer strips with deep rooted, you know, native vegetation. So. Yeah. Okay, so Luann, I think you have next steps. Um, we don't need to take action. And right. you know, thanks to Mr. Card for bringing this to our attention and involving us in the conversation. Um, we look forward to hearing what the Lake Lansing um, Advisory Group comes up with and um, you know, working through resolving that um, issue with them if needed. So, is Yannis okay. on that, um, Luann, is Yannis on that? Yes, case? yes. Okay, all right, perfect. Okay, moving on to the next item, discussion items. None? Mm -mm. Okay, uh, director's report. 
I know we're running super behind here, so um, I'll make this extremely quick. Uh, we've been working with a local resident on the design for a labyrinth in uh, Central Park. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have many more details than that at this time, but um, we'll make sure I, I update you. Um, I know the Environmental Commission is looking at um, obtaining a tree city designation. And so I believe we may have some discussions with them soon. The Park Commission will um, and maybe looking at our park ordinance and adding some guidelines to tree planting requirements and those kinds of things, but that's in the future. Um, I was a guest speaker for Rotary Club and Kiwanis Club last week, gave them all the updates and all the cool stuff going on here in our parks. Um, we are still uh, working on our trail map um, with uh, uh, our funding through the Ingham County Parks and Trails Millage. Um, that's coming along nicely our, for pathways and trails in our parks. We're also working to secure an ATM machine for a marketplace on the green uh, with MSU FCU. Um, I would like to see us uh, work on more park promotional videos with uh, Dan Stevens helping us out with that and, and, and uh, requesting um, an RFP, get quotes and maybe do something that we have nice professional videos. Um, I'm thinking of one for certain in Central Park that there could be a drone picture and then now we have the wooden boardwalk on Okemos Road and then all of our trails throughout the park and the large dog park, the small dog park, marketplace, the trail, the village, the fishing docks. I mean, it, it, we could show people enjoying each one of those. So coming to Central Park could be this wonderful experience that we could promote. Um, and then I did have a meeting with the Friends of Historic Meridian. Uh, they do have some concerns over uh, maintenance items that need to take place in the village and they're asking for funding assistance for some of that. So we are having discussions, ongoing discussions with that. And then also our five-year Parks and Recreation Master Plan um, expires this year. And so we will need to submit a new one before 2022. So um, we might want to look at a survey and what those questions might look like, information we want to um, obtain. Uh, we could formulate some of our monthly meetings in different parks and invite people out. So those are some things that we can think about uh, coming up here. Um, between now and the next meeting so we can have that discussion. Thank you, Luann, for that report. Um, I was hoping that maybe since we're not meeting in April and our next meeting is May 11th, um, that we could look at the time of that meeting and potentially add a two to three hour working session on yes. that meeting. Um, I think that you and your directors, just now in your director's report provided, I think four um, buckets of projects that uh, we really do kind of need to dive into. Um, the survey, the, the promotional materials, the, um, oh goodness, there was the microfood pantry request. The, I mean, there's a number of things going on that I feel like um, warrant like a dedicated chunk of time. And we haven't had a working session in a while. So I think that would be really helpful for all of us to plan on doing that in May, if that's okay. Now, Luann, you said something about not being able to meet personally in, uh, with because of the new township order until June. Um, right, I, we, I just re I forwarded an email to you from, uh, from our township manager, Frank Walsh, that came from Supervisor Steika, that he would um, pretty much prefer no boards and commissions to meet in person through June. Um, but I will obtain more clarification on that. And if there's an opportunity to meet outdoors, um, I think that is, from what I see nodding heads, we would, the yeah. park commission would prefer to try to do that and be socially distanced to meet outdoors in the park, open pavilion type situation. So I'll, I'll obtain clarification on that. Plus that'll be, you know, eight weeks from now. So things sure. may change by then too. Things could change, yeah. Okay. Um, any public comments? Can of course take public comment at 517-349-1232 uh, or anyone here can use the raise hand feature, but I don't believe you have uh, uh, public left in the meeting at this point. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, other matters and commissioner comments, I just wanna thank Luann and Jane um, for all your hard work and everyone that works on your team. It's Grateful. my team, it's my team. <laughs> You're just wonderful and I wanna thank the um, public members who joined us today to bring their matters forth and, and have this robust conversation. Although we're a little bit over in time, I think it was really helpful. Um, so I appreciate that as well. Any other commissioners thoughts or comments before we adjourn the meeting?
I'd like to thank Stephen Gibas too, who is our, um, our director of IT and he is amazing and he manages all of these public meetings and does just such a great job. We appreciate your efforts, Stephen, thank you. Great. It's our pleasure to serve. All right, wonderful. We'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting today at 124. Thank you commissioners for being dedicated to this work and we'll see you all in May. Okay, sounds good. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, take Enjoy care.